Uh, many thanks. Um, my name is Robert Cowell. I'm going to be talking about the integration of gaming engines and the, 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 the spatial industry, um, which is quite an exciting um, innovation that, that, that's really starting to, to take place globally. But predominantly, uh, we're starting to see Australia leading the way. And quite excitingly, starting to see um, some of the Victorian agencies uh, really start to, to lead the global stage on how spatial technology is being utilized um, by both the gaming industry and also the film industry. What you're watching here is a video that was produced um, late last year, utilizing a, a lot of photogrammetry data um, combined with an Unreal Engine, a, a gaming engine um, that was used to produce um, a, a highly realistic um, view of, of Australia. Now, the exciting thing about this is it's technology and spatial data that is available to, to, to many of us. Um, it's spatial information that um, has been produced um, by the likes of DELP um, and it's probably being used by a lot of people that are watching this video now. Um, whether that be from fixed ring capture, whether it be from helicopter, from drones, um, but also in this case, um, it's a ground level temperature. So what you're seeing here um, is a similar example where this is um, a recent capture that we delivered for the city of Bendigo and, and, and DELP, um, where we really got that, that highly realistic 3D model um, of Bendigo, uh, really showing off um, some of the beautiful historic buildings um, across Bendigo and enabling people to be able to do virtual site visits, um, but then being able to also integrate um, existing GIS data, being able to bring in architects type models and, and having that highly realistic view um, of, of the, the, the city. And that's pretty exciting for us where this type of technology um, is happening here in Victoria. It's been um, used by some of our local councils and this type of technology is now underpinning the, the future of Hollywood, the future of films, uh, the future of you know, gaming technology and gaming environments, but also VR uh, and AR environments. Being able to take that type of data that we're familiar with seeing in some of your GIS packages, but being able to then tweak um, the, the settings, tweak the weather, um, change the, the, the time of day, and be able to produce rendering such as this. So these pictures are all the same data um, that you saw in the previous video, um, but utilizing different weather effects and different lighting effects in the gaming engines to produce um, that cinematic realism where we can now um, fly around um, Bendigo um, as if we were really there. Um, so you can see this, this is the type of data that's available. Now, what's helping us to be able to do that is the evolution of gaming engines. Um, so the two main ones are Unity and Unreal Engine um, and the evolution of the ability to be able to stream data that we're familiar with using. So um, Cesium for Unreal Engine allows us to stream Cesium tiles directly into the gaming engine and the RGIS SDK for gaming engines allows us to take our ESRI data straight into the gaming engines and being able to produce that highly realistic, highly cinematic um, data sets. So this is the type of thing that, that we're expecting to see over the next six months. And I think what's exciting is this is being driven here locally by Australian companies, Australian spatial agencies like um, DELP, um, but being produced um, locally here and really leading the world. So everything you see here is being produced photogrammetrically um, with some artistic effects. Um, and this is what we can now do to, to, to really move the spatial industry forward in a, in a way that hasn't been seen up until now. What you're seeing here, this is just um, Adelaide. This is South France. This is Bendigo, uh, which is some artistic effects. And you're starting to see that, that we really can create cinematic type environments, just utilizing the type of data that we're all familiar with using um, in our current day-to-day -day lives.